Well, you know, to be bowl eligible for four consecutive years is, is an amazing accomplishment. And we're, you know, the, the, the success that uh, Coach Holtz has built here has just been phenomenal. Uh, we're so proud of our players and the tradition they're building and the expectations. I mean, you know, when you get to a point where you're six and six and you're hoping to go to a bowl and, and that creates anxiety for you, I think that's a good thing because you've created an expectation of what this program is and what it can be. And um, it is, it is a, it's a program builder. And uh, we're so excited about to see uh, what the future is. But at the end of this week, find out where we might go to a bowl. Uh, we're very optimistic about that, but we don't know. We won't know until uh, the weekend. You know, again, here I am speaking. I'm trying. We want to get in. So you know, at the same time, but if I speak as an athletic director and what's best for college football, you know, I think we're in a position where there should be a reward. There should be. It should be. We should be excited. There should be. You know. Um, you know, a level of uh, gratitude of getting in as opposed to oh, we get to six and six, we're just automatically in. Um, I think for our league, from a standpoint of our league, getting ten bowl teams in that is remarkable and that needs to be uh, that needs to be something that is paraded around and talked about because um, only the ACC is the other only conference that has 10 bowl eligible teams and understand that every time that happens uh, as you get the different cohorts of how you average bowl games over that cohort period it only increases your bowl tie-ins in the future so this is going to help us in the future probably get eight seven eight complete bowl tie-ins as opposed to the six that we have. So uh, even though maybe not every Conference USA team gets in, the fact that we've got 10 eligible is going to help our league move forward as a football league, and I think that's really important. Obviously, when you have the success that he's had, and I, I give Skip so much credit. I told him this Saturday after the game. I told it to him in front of his team. Uh, I was very grateful for his leadership. Uh, you know, this was a very trying year. It was difficult because I think we had great expectations, we had a great home schedule, and we lost so many close games. Uh, a veteran coach um, can handle that situation, and I'm so grateful for Skip's leadership, not only to his players in times of trouble, uh, but to his staff. And I think that if we have maybe a less experienced coach, maybe a less seasoned coach, um, we probably don't get through that time. And I'm very grateful for him. And uh, I don't have any reason to believe that he won't be our coach. We're so grateful and we, we're very blessed that he's here and providing the leadership that he has. I'm worried about trying to get ourselves into a bowl game right now. And uh, you know, ever since I've been at Louisiana Tech, I've been focusing on building this program to be the best it can be. And I feel like we've accomplished a lot of great things. Um, you know, obviously, those things are out there, and I can't stop you from asking that question, but that's the farthest thing from my mind right now. I promise. I've been in my office all day, and it's been, I've been on the phone, but it hadn't been to other schools. It's been conferences and bowl teams. So uh, this is a great place. Louisiana Tech is home for my family. We're blessed to be here and uh, looking forward to what the future has. Our basketball programs are doing fantastic and looking forward to the spring sports. So uh, Louisiana Tech is where we are. You know, it, it's it's crazy. You know, it's been a, a, an interesting year for all those things. But um, you know, I, I, I've I've learned a long time ago that um, in order for me to be the best person that I need to be in terms of an athletic director and those things, I do need to get a good night's sleep, and I need to be mindful of burning on the both ends. There's times, obviously, during a coaching search or situations like this where uh, you just you're working long hours, but you've got to take care of yourself. You got to take care of your body uh, because otherwise you're going to tire out. And uh, this is it's a long grind. And unlike uh, maybe you know head coaches uh, have off seasons and then they have dead periods where they can't recruit, uh, I, we've got 16 sports and I'm the athletic director for all 16 of them, so it never ends. Well, the reality is, is most people are going to wind up signing the bulk of their class uh, December the 20th, and so I think it's good. You know, I think it allows us to to push a decision earlier you know we've we've hurt where we've had a kid committed and then as you know what happens is hey this this uh, you know wide receiver didn't come to this school and so then they're looking for one and then they come pluck it from us and I'm hoping that that stops that from happening at our level 
uh, and gives us a chance to get those kids locked in and, and uh, get focused on coming to Louisiana Tech. Because at the end of the day, we've proven that uh, it's certainly not a disadvantage to come to Louisiana Tech. If you want to go, uh, have an opportunity to, to win at a high level uh, and then have an opportunity to go play professionally, uh, the data would show that you come to Louisiana Tech, we can do that. All of our, I think, nine draft picks over the last three years have come from local areas and they've been four-year kids. They've not been junior college transfers. We've had more draft picks than any other Conference USA program uh, in that time period. And so, I mean, statistics would show if you want to come, come to Louisiana Tech, perform at a high level, get noticed, go, go get drafted, make a career of yourself in the professional ranks. This team is, is very talented, and I think we all know that we could easily be a, a nine or ten win team. I mean, like that. And, and um, you know, we're young, we made some mistakes, uh, but we stayed the course. I, when, when we, we played Florida Atlantic at home, and go back to the last touchdown they scored, our uh, players blocked their extra point, the very last touchdown that was scored. It, that told me as an athletic director that this team had not quit and that they were, with, they were willing to fight. I knew at that point I felt like we were going to win those last two games. Uh, it's just little things like that. You know, the game was over. We had lost the game, but they mustered up enough effort and they blocked the extra point in a game that was already decided. That showed me a lot of grit from this team. And uh, I felt like, you know, at that point they were going to put it together and then kind of almost felt like the UTEP game was like the, the pressure valve that kind of came off. And even though we kind of still got a little tight there in the third quarter, it almost felt like we kind of breathed a little bit. And then the UTSA, UTSA is a good team. I mean, they're, they're not a bad program. And um, what we did to them defensively was impressive. And, uh, and, and that's, uh, that's a credit to a lot of people. So.